Today, we're talking about surgical wounds. By the end of this video, you'll know what warning signs to watch for and how to act early, even if you don't have fancy imaging or a full hospital setup. Most post-op wounds look fine until they don't. The redness creeps, the drainage changes, but what's just normal healing and what needs a closer look? Sometimes a wound is warning us before the patient even feels sick. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Voltaire, a wound care physician. And in my practice, I don't always have a vascular lab down the hall. So I've learned to lean on what I do have, my eyes, my hands, and my clinical instincts. And that's what this video is about. If you're in primary care, urgent care, or home health, this is for you. You don't need a high level hospital to catch early signs of trouble. You just need to know what matters most and what not to ignore. We'll walk through what a healthy post-op wound should look like, which signs mean watch and which mean act, the top complications you'll see outside the hospital, and near the end, I'll give you the five questions I ask before escalating care. Let's get into it. Let's start with the basics. A healthy surgical wound is closed and dry or lightly moist, slightly pink around the edges, mildly tender but not hot, swollen, or spreading. Some drainage is okay, especially early on. What's not okay is change without a clear reason because that's often the earliest sign that something is brewing. Let me tell you about Mr. D. He was a 62 year old man who came to me 10 days after a hernia repair. He didn't seem too worried and said the wound felt fine, just sore. But when I unwrapped it, I noticed that there was a faint odor, the edges looked a little too red, and the drainage, which was clear before, had turned pale yellow. No fever, no chills. Vitals were good, but something didn't sit right. So I cleaned the area, documented everything, and gave strict return precautions. When he called back two days later saying he felt off and the drainage had doubled, I got him back in. By then, he was febrile and the wound was definitely infected. We got it before it got deep. A short course of antibiotics, wound care, and he did fine. But if I hadn't taken that earlier sign seriously, or if he hadn't come back when I asked, we might have been looking at a readmission. There are four things I always teach to watch for in post-surgical wounds. Change in drainage. If it goes from clear to cloudy, or serosanguinous to greenish or thick, something's shifted. Also redness that spreads. It's one thing to have a pink edge. It's another when that pinkness creeps wider every day. Heat or pain out of proportion. Some sore soreness is normal, but sharp pain or hot wound bed pay attention. Systemic clues like low-grade fever, fatigue, or confusion in older adults, these matter even without textbook infection signs. You don't need a CT scan to catch early problems. Here's what I use. Look at the wound every time. Never just read the note. Add about change. Has the dressing been more wet than before? Touch around the edges. Warmth matters. And trust your gut. If you're wondering, does this seem off? Document and follow up. In my setting, I get a CBC or CRP if the wound's borderline and the patient is showing other signs. Otherwise, I'll watch closely and bring them back sooner. Here's what can trip us up. Assuming it's just inflammation, especially in larger patients. Blaming pain on the incision instead of looking at the wound. Thinking no fever means no infection. Or worse, leaving the dressing on for five days and not looking at it. Don't let protocol replace assessment because the wound tells its own story if we just look. Let's name the top three complications I see in clinic. So there's a superficial wound infection with redness, drainage, change, mild odor, often manageable with local care and oral antibiotics. We have seromas, which are fluid pockets under the skin. It can look like swelling and sometimes mistaken for infection. Dehiscence, which is when the wound edges separate, often due to pressure or strain. Watch especially in the abdomen, back, or large breast incisions. These don't always need the ER, but they do need to be caught early. Here are the five questions I ask myself when I'm on the fence. Is the drainage increasing or changing color? Is the redness expanding beyond the wound margins? Is there warmth or pain that wasn't there before? Has the patient's energy, appetite, or temperature shifted? Would I feel okay waiting 48 hours without regret? If I answer yes to two or more, I'm calling it in, getting help, or escalating. It's not about panic, it's about pacing. Don't wait until the wheels fall off. Post-op wounds don't whisper. They speak just quietly. And if we know how to listen early, we can catch problems before they need IV antibiotics or hospital bed. You don't need to be a surgeon to spot trouble. You just need to show up look close and trust what you're seeing. Thanks for watching. If this video helped, check out my next one on topical antimicrobials, how to know when they're helping or hurting. Stay informed and heal well.